I'm giving this cigar a boom. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. How do they have that many viewers, man? Oh, it's my brain God. Rock. We're clearly doing something wrong. Uh, yeah. Uh, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, great. What are they going to do this time? And it's never like anything impressive. It's like Costco food, right? It's like normal, like $1 hot dog. I give this cigar by Placencia a boom. And the whole screen's like, you know, like. It's a double choke chocolate cigar. <laughs> you know what I give this base a cigar? Oh, boop, 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 boop. You ever seen like they do like a five booms or six booms? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like boom, boom, boom. Oh my god! All right, stop. Yeep. All right, we're gonna start. You are tuning in to the Cigar Guys podcast where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. Thanks, so. Welcome back to another episode of the Cigar Guys. We're gonna rate our cigars one to ten, and we're gonna rate if it's a boom or a doom. And we hope you have no plume on your cigar, <laughs> like, <laughs> like Jared. <laughs> I know. We're talking about. Uh, don't right. care. We're talking about unique pairings with cigars. Things we pair with cigars. Zach's freaking out because we skipped the intro, but it's okay. He doesn't realize that we have an intro that I added afterwards. So, what we're going to do... I do realize that. First things first, I think it's a perfect time to talk about this right here. Do you know what this is? That's an infinity bottle. Correct, Mark. It's an infinity bottle. Yeah, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess it's a bottle. More specifically, the Cigar Guys infinity bottle. And we're going to add some more stuff to it live on camera right now. Why is it cold? Uh, it was in the fridge. I, I wanna, Why? Because it, that was the only place I could put it. We're going to put some toast? Basil head and toast? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We measure uh, like scientists, you freaking heathen. So we're going to add, well, first of all, it already has regular Basil Hayden, Angel's Envy, um, 1972 something bourbon something, Old Forester 20. Yeah, I think a couple other stuff. So now we're adding basil Hayden toast, 1.5 ounces each. Make sure not to spill. <laughs> What's next? We're also going to add Macallan 12 sherry oak cast. Jared's heart is hurting watching this. Yeah. It's okay. I'll drink it later. And it's going to be 33 different types of whiskeys in here by the time we're done with it. 1.5 liter bottle, and then you just divide that by something, something, and then it equals 33. Does Blanton's going in there? The Blanton's is going in there. Just pour the whole thing in there. Make it easy. Blanton's! Yeah, it's probably going to be about the same anyway. <laughs> it's okay. It's good so stuff. You can stop there. You wanted that last There shot. we go. I didn't. And last but not least, Old Faithful, Monkey Shoulder. All right, oh, well, we, got the, that oh, we got the O. Oh, we got the O. Oh, we got the O. What are you we, we, we smoking today? Starting with me. I'm smoking something by Placencia. I already forgot. Jerry, what are you smoking? I'm smoking the Gold Series from Gambino Cigars. Oh. The mafia was lucky, or we're lucky from the mafia to donate this to us. So I'm really happy. <laughs> very generous of them. I, I like I, I like being on their good side. I am also smoking the Gambino Cigar Gold Series. Wow, how do you like it so far? It's a little spicier than I was anticipating. Hmm. I nice. am smoking the Besa Cigar Maduro. Um, I needed something really good to take the edge off today. 
What, do we, what am I drinking? What do you want to drink? Put in the comment below what I should drink. <laughs> guess and I'm, I if guess you said McAllen Sherry Cast, drinking McAllen Twelve. Look at this. And everyone else grabs the bottle. Oh, wow! Why, why Sherry Cast, not Double Oak? Because it was a gift. Because it was a gift. I like Sherry Cast, and I haven't had it in a while. So, did he used to drink the eighteen Sherry Cast all the time? No, it's a uh, Double Cast. I think excited. Excited? Right. Hey, look. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, haven't, I haven't done this in a little while, so I'm a little, a little rusty. We're doing the intro 15 minutes in? We already did the intro. Oh, then what are you being rusty about? Oh, he's switching. Me? The oh, they're not working. It's not working. Great. It's clicked. Jerry, what's wrong? Jay, what's wrong? You need to hit the little thing on the side. It's it's unplugged. Oh, uh, yeah. Did it get unplugged? Yeah, it's unplugged. There it is. See more butts. Is, there we go. There we go, brother. Okay. Anyway, I think I said this already. I'm going to say it again. We're talking about cigar pairings. Stuff to pair with your cigars. We're going to start with like the most common stuff. Go to some things that are more unique. Uh, and then we're going to give you recommendations on, generally speaking, what cigars to pair with these items. This is all, this is definitely all opinionated. This is definitely all, um, what's the word? Opinionated? I said that word. The other one. It's all up to preference, I think, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's all, yeah, it's all preference. Yeah. So, it's not fact-based. I consider it fact-based because I'm always right, but... You can deviate from what we're going to say. So, the first one, which I think is one of the most obvious ones when it comes to people thinking about cigars and what they drink with them, it's whiskey. (laughs) That's right, Mark. It's whiskey. Go ahead and tell us about whiskey when it comes to pairing with cigars. All right. So, I mean, whiskey is, you have a lot of different, a lot of different. See, the thing about pairing is that, <laughs> is that you don't want it to overpower anything. You just want them to blend together nicely. So personally, like when you're smoking a Maduro, I'm going to, I'm going to drink a bourbon. And the reason for that is bourbon has a lot of strong flavors. The proof is a little higher. Maduros have a lot of strong flavors, you know. Generally. A little stronger, so they paired nicely together versus if you had like a strong bourbon and a Connecticut, you know, the bourbon's going to overpower the Connecticut. Now, when we're talking about like scotches, I might pair a scotch with a good Habano. It's a good middle ground for both. Maybe some Japanese whiskey as well. Whoa. Yeah. Um, Irish whiskey... I don't know, man. They don't make Irish cigars, so we can't drink Irish whiskey. The the St. Patty's Day cigar. (laughs) Yeah, but it's not like from Ireland. Like you have Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey's from Ireland. Yeah, the cigar is from. To be honest, I really don't. I really don't drink a lot of Irish whiskey. Do you even know? Know anything, Zach? Do you know anything about Irish whiskey besides Jameson? No. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. What do you what do you, you guys' thoughts on this? I think you said it pretty pretty well. I, I don't I don't really disagree with what you said. Um, I am drinking a Scotch with this Maduro, but this Maduro is not sh- as strong. It's more on the sweet side, and this Sherry Cast is on the sweet side, so it's kind of like a mix of the same thing. If that makes sense. But you're right, though. If I had a bourbon right now, it would probably overpower this cigar just because it's not as strong. But these flavor notes are pairing well. Generally, though, well, I agree with you when I would say that if I have a scotch, I'm probably going to have like a Besa, Habano, maybe like a medium body Connecticut. But yeah, I would agree with that. Bourbon, definitely good for stronger cigars. Yeah, I agree. Um, Peated whiskeys. Very good. Okay. You like peated whiskeys? I like all types of whiskeys. I don't discriminate here. <laughs> I discriminate. Uh, you're dumping um, 
uh, some liquid smoke. I think Alex put it best the other day. Uh, you're dumping some liquid smoke into whiskey to give it flavor. I think that's absolutely terrible, which I don't know if that is actually what they do, but that's what it tastes like. Um, I don't think that pairs well with any cigar. I think it should be outlawed. Despite the fact that cigars are smoky. Whoa. It does not pair well. It does not. Yeah. It does not. I mean. <laughs> you know what's the worst scotch I've ever had is uh, Ardbeg. You ever had I that? second. Huh? I second. Oh, it's so smoky. Was it you and I that tried it? No. At Corona? Or I, was I, it, you, it was you and I that tried it at Corona. Was that the peated one? Or was it just super like, smoky? Super smoky. What's the difference? They were all like six years old or like eight years old. And they're green. It looked like a wine bottle at first. And then it was not. I'd say the worst tasting whiskey I ever had is Glendorak. I accidentally bought three bottles of it. I'm still, I still haven't finished <laughs> I it. I accidentally bought three bottles is the funniest thing I've heard all day. Yeah, because I thought I finished one. So what, I bought another bottle to replace that. <laughs> what about like old fashioned? I mean, to, to hide its terrible flavor. It's, See, that's it's what I do. If down. I don't like the whiskey, or maybe the whiskey's like so strong that it's not even enjoyable, you turn it into an old fashioned and your problems are solved. I'd rather just donate it to my friends. I was going to get. Well, yeah. so you hate us so much, you're going to give us your shit whiskey? That's, that's what he I, does. Is that what you gave us the other time? You're like, oh, yeah, it's not good, but here, have it. I thought I gave. I'm, I thought you guys McCown 18, McCown 12. No, to be fair, he actually did oh. say you can have it, but I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I didn't I, like the McCown 18. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke, Jared. Don't cry. Yeah, Jared was supposed Don't to bring cry. some, but. Is what it is. I could, but I mean, we already have McCown. I was taking Sharpie and I'm writing a line right there. Another. Were you about to say the same thing? Yeah. Another, Another pretty good pairing uh, with cigars uh, is certain types of rum, like aged rum. Uh, you get a lot of flavor notes from it. That's uh, with an aged rum, you get a lot more sweeter notes off of it. Um, you still get that the whole, you know, kind of whiskey esque flavor because it's aged in a, you know usually a charred barrel. Um, but like I think uh, Diplomatico. Yeah. Well, yeah. too, like a lot of, um, there's some whiskeys or scotches that are aged in rum barrels too. Belvini so 14. there's that, yeah, there's that similar, like similarities in the flavor notes and stuff. So really, rum could be a sweeter version of, yeah, like a Belvini Caribbean cast. Yeah, I could see that. Makes sense. But yeah, like vanilla. I concur. I'm glad. Flavor notes like vanilla, caramel. Stuff like that. Oak. Oak. You know, hazelnut, cedar. Uh. <laughs> I, I feel like <laughs> there's a cigar that tastes like that. It might actually pair perfectly with what we're talking about right now. And that brings us to our next thing. It pairs perfectly with a good Habano. Uh, the base of cigar Habano. We smoked it with rum. Yeah. Wait, why, why, are you guys, why are you guys laughing over there? I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. Uh, Mark is always in a good mood. He's smiling. Exactly. Anyway, um, yeah, rum usually pairs well with like a uh, uh, a Habano. Um, you could pair it with a Maduro if you kind of want to counteract the spice with the sweetness. Uh, you know, kind of like that salty sweet sort of thing. That's another thing about pairing is some people like to go for the contrast. Other people like to go for like the compliment. Contrast is like a strong, heavy, spicy cigar paired with something that's like lighter and sweet. And obviously having like a pairing that compares is like having two light, a cigar that's light and like a whiskey that's light or a scotch that's light with floral notes that kind of mix together. So it depends on preference, depends on your mood. What would you consider as a light scotch though? Well, scotch in general is lighter than like whiskey and bourbon. You think so? Yes. For sure. I know so. Which is kind of why it shocks me that you love these, you know, really strong cigars, but then you're a scotch guy. I'm pretty sure. Are you, are you saying like the, the scotch goes down, like McCown 12 goes down smoother? What? Than bourbon? No, I, I'm just saying it's like, like, like a, I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, for sure. Do you think that scotch is... Wait, you think bourbon goes down easier than scotch? Like prime example, speaking? is it monkey shoulder or bourbon? No, no. monkey shoulder no, is scotch. scotch. What's this? Boom. Case Toast. closed. Yeah. Well, I mean, I drink this straight too. Yeah, but this is a little Two. rougher than the Macallan. For sure. I mean, I drink it all straight, but well, I drink... Well, here's an example. Okay. Can't see. It's going to be like 45, right? Okay, so 45. What's yes. this? 45, I think too. This, but the, but basil head and toast is more on the lighter side of bourbons. Yeah, I mean, toast yeah. toast is definitely not like a. I wouldn't consider it like a true bourbon. To me, I would just think of basil Hayden as a whole. I kind of just think as like a generic whiskey, kind of like Jameson is just an Irish whiskey, right? Yeah, to me, toast tastes more like Scotch and bourbon. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, bourbon is definitely stronger slash harsher. I think. Yeah, especially when you get into like the Maker's Marks. I will. Yeah, I mean, I used to drink bourbons that were like 130 proof. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like the uh, Corona Select Barrel, whatever. I think it was 125, something like that. They still have it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can still get it, yeah. Okay. I think they do it every year. So, you got me to change my cigars. Now, you're about to get me to change my whiskey. That's the goal. Instead of uh, McCallum 18, he's going to get the Whistle Pig. <laughs> All right, next up we have probably, I, I would actually go ahead and say this is the most common, uh, is coffee. Because uh, you could have coffee dark, smoke it with a Maduro, you could have light coffee, smoke with a Connecticut. You could even smoke, I, I don't even think coffee is so overbearing, you could even smoke uh, Connecticut with an espresso, I think. What about like Irish whiskeys or espresso martinis? That's coffee in it too. Yeah, they're a little on the sweeter. I think I agree with you when you say coffee generally pairs better with like a Connecticut or a light Habano. Yeah, yeah. You know, like even if you have espresso, it pairs better with a Connecticut than it does with like a stronger Maduro. But the flavor complements each other for an espresso and a Maduro. But the body is more similar to Connecticut and like those lighter flavors for sure match up for sure. Coffee's just all around good for every kind of cigar. And yeah, like every, a lot of people drink coffee. Almost everyone. And even if you're not 21, you can enjoy coffee and a cigar. Technically, you can. In some states, you could uh, enjoy a cigar and a drink as long as you had parental supervision with you. Interesting. I wonder if it's like, does it have to be your parents or is it like an adult? Like what defines parental supervision? It's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's like adult supervision or what. Big brother probably. <clears throat> but I know. Rel- like, relative. Like what about my grandfather? I, th- I think that counts. I know like some restaurants. Parent. Like in like Texas or something. Ah. So it's actually even better. <laughs> it's twice as good. Sorry, Zach. What were you saying? I forgot, but uh, red wine is a pretty good pairing. Definitely, I think it's become more common with pairing cigars. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I I agree, but I also feel like uh, if you're gonna drink red wine with it, you have to you have to know the different flavors of wine, and like normally, what you like probably won't pair good with the cigar that you like. What you're trying to say is that you really do need to know like the the body and the flavors in order to pair good with a cigar. Like you can't just drink any white or any red whoa, wine. Whoa. Sorry. Whoa. I would never. I would oh never. God. I would never Oof. any red wine with any cigar. That's a 40 and, and slip expect right there. it to be good. Although a white uh wine might go good with like a candela. Mm, yeah. Careful, Zach. For those that enjoy white wine and candelas, not at this table. But see, honestly, though, I feel like red wine is the most likely out of the group to change the flavor of the cigar for you. I think it's the most like yeah. potent, if that makes sense. Strongest when it comes to like body, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's definitely going to add a lot of flavor um, to it. Like I've experienced wines that I don't like normally. Uh, and, and they'll change each other, right? Yes. So, like, 
I've experienced wines I don't like on a normal basis, but if I smoke a cigar, I like that wine. Yeah. Um, and vice versa. You know, if I'm drinking a wine that I like, a cigar normally that I don't like, I might like it with that cigar. I think that, or that uh, wine. yeah, generally the red wine 100% changes the flavor of the cigar you're smoking. So if you smoke like this cigar with a red wine and then smoke it the next day without the wine, they'll taste completely different. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Another good one, I think, as I read this list, um, <laughs> I'm not a big cognac guy, uh, but cognacs go good with cigars, but they give a lot of sweetness to it. Yeah. Um, so, if you're going to pair a like, you know, I feel like that would go good with, you know, to be honest with you, like uh, a flavored cigar or sweet tip cigar. Oh. Um what? I, I don't know. You smoke those now. I, I never said I smoked them. I'm just saying. <laughs> he feels like like if, if there's the energy that I, they I give off. It sounds like there was some experience in there with it when he said that. <laughs> there's not any experience from it. Um, <laughs> I actually have video evidence that proves your point contra- contradictory. In fact, it worsens it. It wasn't even just a sweet tip cigar. It was an infused cigar. Cut it. We're canceling the podcast. Next one. Something I never drink and tastes terrible. I don't even know why it's on the list. Wait, 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 wait. You never drank it, but it tastes terrible? I mean, no. you taste it one time. Okay. So you did drink it. A little. But never finish. I've it's never terrible. I've never found one I like either. Jerry never yeah, finishes. It's, confirmed it's, on the podcast. It's very it's very thick. It's like uh syrup. Yeah, I agree. Port wine is disgusting. I also have tried once. And I it's nasty. concur. It's so nasty. It's like someone gave you fake wine. They're like, why'd you do this to me? <laughs> it's a stale. It is like syrup. It's like really sweet. I've been told like you have to try certain types of port wines because they're different. But I almost don't even want to like experiment that much. You know, like I just stick to like, you know, the straight and narrow. Like I'm not one to experiment. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, he's, he did enough of that in college. Exactly. <laughs> so. Was that out of state? <laughs> it was out of state. Oklahoma. The worst four months of my life. <laughs> mm. Because of experimenting or because of other things? All of the above. <laughs> what is it, port wine? What, what, what is it? What is, what is, uh, what do the people recommend we pair port wine with? A strong uh, and spicy cigar? I mean, I guess that would make sense. To counteract the oversweetness that comes with the port wine. The over syrupness. Yeah. I'll tell you what though, I mean they they're saying to pair it with uh the Nico Reaper, which uh, I mean, you know, that mm. cures all, right? That is a strong cigar. That would actually make that might bring balance. You have a super overly sweet port wine with a extremely rich spicy cigar. I'll admit, smoking a Nika Reaper on an empty stomach was the first time I ever thought to myself, I should have eaten before, you know, smoking a cigar. I try to smoke it in the morning once. I try to emphasize every time I say that cigar. Yeah, you waste That's that what, cigar, though. You know, I, I, got, I got to get that cigar and bring it uh, to one of um, one of my clients, I guess, in uh, Kansas City, because he smokes a triple Maduro every morning. That's his first cigar. So I got to bring him that and be like, you know what? Smoke this in the morning. Let's see. Let's see if this is strong enough for you. He's one of those guys. Yeah. Triple Modos are very strong. Mark gave me one once. I did. That was very kind of you. Let us know if you drink port wine like regularly, like you enjoy port wine. I'm curious to hear who enjoys port wine. I don't like hearing opinions that go against my belief, so. Yeah, because you're a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I saw it on the record. Next one we got is uh, craft beer. Mark, mm. you want to take this one? Yeah, I'm a huge craft beer guy. Um, pretty much I stick to like all like the small local brands like Mick Ultra, <laughs> Yingling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I heard um, Yingling came out with like uh, a light beer. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. Y- Yingling Flight. So, 
a flight. That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't find it like in a lot of places. Like it's super low key. You know, it's good though. It's good. No, no, honestly, I'm not a big crap beer guy. Um, I used to be at one point in my life. I was lied on the podcast. I think I think everybody was a crap beer guy at one point in their life. You know what I mean? Yeah, we all used to drink Heineken. I get can, it. Can concur. Can concur. Will concur. In some, fact, some people don't grow out of it. Some people like the craft to beer. To be fair, we lived like 15 minutes away from Cellar City Craft. It's in the name. They've got like 80 plus craft beers. Yeah, and they're really good. Five minutes away from a brewery. <laughs> yeah, there's like a bunch of local breweries. Taco. That too. But we never go there and we never drink their craft beer. But we go to Cellar City, I, or we used to. At least. Hmm. But even when I did go to like drink crappy, I never drank IPAs. Just couldn't do it. That's different. I love IPAs. Do you? Oh, yeah. So bitter. You are an IPA guy. He's a software engineer. Of course, he's an IPA guy. Yeah, it makes sense. California guy over here. Yeah, IPA. <laughs> Intellectual property agriculture. It tastes amazing. <laughs> it's so good. You got to try it. What do, you, what, do you, what do you usually pair like an IPA with, though? The second IPA. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're booked by then some of those give like, like double and triple ipas a triple ipa with a triple maduro there we oh go. my god i'll tell you what where i became a big ipa guy was in utah because it was more cost eff- uh, efficient to drink ipas than it was whiskey over there because mm. uh they they control their liquor uh, quite a bit. Oh, mm. we're gonna get that one guy in the comments, right? Saying, remember the, uh, Utah expert, yeah, three four nine. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he, that's not true. Oh, dude, their whiskey, th- their drinking laws are so bad. Here's the thing: like, if you've lived in a place for most of your life, you're accustomed to how things work there, and you don't realize that America, like the literally the biggest country in the world, has so many different cities with different laws and different pricing i mean rent is different from like county to county in some places yeah so you're gonna tell me that people people just don't realize how free america actually is until they leave their uh really controlled state you're gonna tell me that like liquor is cheap where you live you've never been to rural america (laughs) what's the strongest um crap beer you guys have had 10.2. 10.2. That's it? Mine was 45%. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a beer? Yeah. I think I was going to say like it was around 15. Can you, it was like a peanut butter you, uh, chocolate. Show me where this place is. It was, it was at World of Beer like a long time oh, ago. Oh, yeah. I haven't, yeah, I remember that place. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Dude, it was right across the street. Yeah, man. Yeah. World of Beer, it's actually a cool place. And World there's one year you still have. I'm not still there. Well, listen. Yeah, it is still yeah, there. It's still there. Yeah. That World, place used to be popping. World yeah. of Beer. That's just the most American thing you can ever have. I think they really started the whole crap beer trend. Can like, I get the time. one million beers, please? <laughs> Boom. Done. Yeah, but the beer tasted disgusting. And they only give you like the little, the little cup. Well, isn't that technically just spirit at that point? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It's like <laughs> no, but they, they keg it. So it's a beer. It, it literally tasted like beer with vodka. Can in it. we keg a whiskey? No. I mean, we can, but no. How big is a keg going to be? Awesome for us. I just had four beers. <laughs> Kegged whiskey. Is whiskey barrel just like the keg of the whiskey world? Pretty much. No. No, it's not. Is wait, your, wait what, was your, what was your question? Is a whiskey barrel like the equivalent to a keg for beer? No, because you don't order no. a whiskey barrel to your restaurant. You Why not? You just don't. I'm but, pretty but sure actually possible. some people do. I, Corona I, had barrels at one point. Yeah, but not that they served out of. I was at an Irish bar one yes, time. Yes, they did. Really? London House yes. had like three a barrels. Big, a big barrel? That they, yes. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. They didn't serve whiskey out of that barrel. Yes, they did. No, that was like a, that was a, <laughs> an ashtray holder. Yeah, after they ran out of whiskey. No. Oh, you remember? You remember you were there? I don't think yes. so, man. I really don't think so. Look I it ha- up. I have been to an Irish bar one time. They did serve uh, Jameson out of a keg. So it is oh. possible. You mean a barrel? Or a barrel, yeah, There whatever. you go. See? Yeah, but it's not common at all. I never said it was common. You said you, don't, you, you can't just order a barrel Exception to your to the restaurant. rule is not the rule. 
and you serve from the you. barrel. <laughs> no, I'm backing him up. Can you just <laughs> get, now we have to buy one, like one of the small ones from London House. Those little things. No, we'll just buy a whole keg. Buy but a that, small those one. small ones don't count because you fill them up. I agree with that. I mean, so you, you fill up buy any keg. One. I don't know. I don't understand what you're saying. You can't. Yeah, but you're not buying a whole keg, and you know, you know me. You know me. You know how much room you have to have? Enough room for a barrel. We could put it right there. So you're going to order next week. 20, you're going to have 20 different whiskeys on your menu. You're going to have a barrel for each one? Yeah. Then you never have to order it again. Well, think about it. It's easier. You know, it's probably going to be the same price. If you put up, you know, shit on the wall for decorations, well, if you just have a wall full of barrels of whiskey, you don't got to put decorations. So you're saving money, realistically. That would be a cool concept for like a whiskey bar. Think about it, though. You order a barrel. When are you going to order that whiskey again? Years from now. Or next week, you know, depending yeah. on your clientele, it's it's an investment. If I mean, if normal people go in there, it's going to be a year before you order another barrel. If Jared goes in there, it's going to be a week. Yeah, if it's if it's McAllen, absolutely. Whatever, man. What? No, no. Say it. You got something to say? <laughs> I'm going to Kona right after this. I'm going to find the nearest manager and confirm this. Do it. There's no way that they used to serve whiskey out of a barrel okay where where, where would, would they, they put it yeah where would they put it uh in the back bar and they would they would walk back there fill up a glass of whiskey i don't know how they did it all i know is that they had a barrel of a specific type of whiskey and i'm going to confirm it tonight you do you man you do you i will alex is going to travel to every single bar until you get a manager confirmation of a whiskey barrel it's going to take me one bar <laughs> you really think uh, that manager is going to know? It depends on who's the manager. True. Anyway, back to our list. What we got next? Scotch. Yeah, we already kind of went over that. You, yep. you could glaze it. Tequila. Tequila actually uh, could be a pretty good parent. Becoming uh, more common, more presented amongst the community. I agree, uh, but it's it's really got to be like a dark tequila. You could pair it with a lighter one, but well, I think it, it it not necessarily. I think it just depends back to like the flavor notes, the body. It has to be real tequila with one hundred percent agave. Go to episode, I want to say seventeen. We introduced tequila and cigars on this podcast with Manolo from Casa 1910 Cigars, whose whole mission was to create a cigar that pairs with tequila. For a cigar of its kind. Pretty much. So Good cigar, too, I would add. But generally, I personally would agree with Zach. A darker tequila, like a Mascal, maybe. Um, maybe like a uh, Raspado, Raspado, and Yeho. And Yeho. Um, Reposado. With like a medium bodied cigar, a light Mexican San Andres wrapper or like a Habano kind of thing going on. Maybe like a Padron Natural. Padron Natural, maybe. If you get like a, a stronger tequila for sure to help balance. But tequila is becoming more popular amongst cigar smokers. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's like very popular yet. No. But. There's a it's, lot of like tastings that are doing tequila now. Yeah, I think um, especially since places are starting to do like old fashioned cocktails with tequila, they're experimenting with that. Um, and a lot of places are cigar lounges that do that. Um, I think that's kind of helping it get into that popularity. At the end of the day, listen, it's just another tactic to sell more liquor. That's all it is. But Take advantage of it and enjoy it at the same time. Exactly. Exactly. Going on to our more unique pairings, how do you guys feel about champagne? I would say champagne is probably not a good pairing. I, 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 would, I, I, would, agree. I would consider it a palate cleanser, actually. I consider it like a celebratory pairing. You're not really focusing too much on either or. Like, I would probably pair a Davidoff with it. Davidoff know, signature. Interesting. At, like, a wedding with a nice Don Perrier. 
yeah. champagne oh, yeah. Dom, provided by Zach. You mean Dom, Dom Perignon? That's what I said. Paired with a Davidoff signature at my wedding. Thank you, Zach. Hey, hey, hey. My signature champagne is Louis Thirteen. Yeah, Louis Thirteen champagne. Good champagne, too. Courtesy of Zach. Thank you in advance. That actually... <laughs> Uh, that actually, I think, pairs very well with the cigar. That would we need to try this now. Yeah, we need a bottle like right now. Who do we call? Currently Lauren? backtracking. Lauren's got a bottle. I'll go steal hers. She don't need it. So yeah, definitely a very light cigar. Like a Davidoff would be definitely a good pick for that. I think there's something missing on this list. What about uh, what about gin? That's a good. That's a good one. We have an expert on gin. Who? I'm not. I mean, I'm not a crack. I did drink a lot of gin at one point. I'm not like a crazy expert. Now, if I'm pairing a gin with a cigar, probably leaning towards like a tank ray, something with a lot more flavor in it. Probably pair that with. Actually, that might go good with um um. Oh my god, what's a what's the one I'm thinking of? Uh, good question. African. Cameroon? Cameroon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I, Actually, I, could, yeah, I told I you he was an that. expert. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe like a Nolet Silver. Um, Yeah, that would probably go pretty good together. Hmm. And Hendrix makes a lot of good, like, um, they have like summer solstice or whatever it is. They have a lot of good, like, seasonal, seasonal gins that probably pair pretty well with like a Connecticut. Cameroon. I think Cameroon is probably the best one. Actually, that... Makes a lot of sense. This might be the way to bring Cameroons to the forefront. Yeah. I personally am not a huge fan of Cameroon. Or if you're bougie, you get like a Nolet's Platinum. It's got saffron in it. Rolex Platinum? <laughs> yes. That works. That pairs well nice. Gotcha. Okay. That's cool. what I heard. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go buy one right now. Interesting. Hmm. Beef eater is good. I mean, there's a long list, but is that a? Gym? I mean, you could do they what? Gin after me? Which uh, Empress, right? The purple one? Yeah, yeah, yeah the perf- the color. That one sucks. Mm. You know, that's a whole that's a, that's a whole gimmick one. It is. I mean, but I, I it's think good it's with cocktails. Good. It's good with cocktails. Yeah, but you're not drinking that straight. It's not that good. What well, if? What if? Go off the deep end here. What if we had like moonshine with a cigar? Whoa, that, that, you're, getting, that, you're getting ahead of yourself. That brings us to our next thing. Oh, um, what do you mean? Of Albanian heritage. Oh. Uh, pairing cigars with Raki. What is Raki? Raki is a traditional Albanian liquor. It's a brandy. It's made from plums, grapes. Um, it could be made from a lot of stuff, but that's usually it. You know, plums and grapes are the most popular. Plums taste fantastic. Um, you get a little fruity flavor from it, real smooth going down. If you know, you know, someone good that makes it like me, um, <laughs> but it's got a little kick too. Yeah, it's definitely, it has a heat behind it. Um, so you could really pair that. It's, it's not a common pairing and I wouldn't, I wouldn't push as a common pairing, but you could pair it with, you know, either a light cigar if you want to enjoy the Raki you know, the flavor from it, uh, or if you want to, you know, focus more on the hotness of, uh, the liquor itself, you could pair it with, you know, a stronger Maduro. Um, but then you wouldn't be tasting the, uh, you wouldn't be tasting the, um, the flavor, flavor of the Rocky, but yeah, brandies, uh, I, I, I mean, I think it's a good pairing, but that could, I could be, I could just be, uh, uh, biased on that opinion. I thought it was a pretty, pretty good opinion, in my opinion, which is factual opinion. Yeah, I have to agree. My truth is the truth. Next up, what kind of cocktails you guys drinking with your cigars besides old fashioned? I was given. gonna say old fashioned is like the cocktail that you pair with a cigar. That's well, like and anything like like whiskey, you know, cocktail like old fashioned Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One thing I saw online that I kind of want to try is um it is a uh espresso old fashioned. 
Those are good. Yeah. Uh, Jared said too, espresso martini, the tying into the coffee aspect. Yeah. For that, you probably want like a little sweeter cigar. Well, well I mean, it's, cigar. it's silver meso. It, it depends how the espresso martini is made, you know, because you could have a dark espresso martini that's more bitter um, where it's, you know, basically just vodka and espresso. And I think that's what Jared's talking about when he says espresso martini. Yeah, absolutely. And well, I mean, if you have like cream when you're espresso martini, mm. you're probably a woman, which is okay. I think they're great. But when it comes to cigars, you want a black, like you said, espresso, maybe a little sweet, but maybe not. And while we're on the topic of espresso martinis, stop making them if you can't put espresso in it. I just had, uh, on that note, uh, Jared missed out. We invited him. He didn't show up. I don't know what's wrong with him. What was this? The Uber was too expensive, I guess. I don't know. Um, to Sanford. I had an espresso martini made. Yeah, actually, it wasn't even, I wouldn't even call it an espresso martini. But they called it an espresso martini. It was made with Yoohoo and vodka. It was so like chocolate, chocolate milk. milk. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 chocolate drink because there's no milk in it. It's just chocolate and water and vodka, basically. They're like, try this espresso martini. Was this from uh, West End Country? No, was this was from yeah. Celery yeah. City. <laughs> Cigar or craft? Craft. Okay. Sounds okay. like I didn't miss out on that though. Funny to watch, but no, you missed out on the fantastic old fashions that Matt made us. But hmm. at Celery City Cigars, which is where you go to get a cocktail. They used to have this really good whiskey sour that wasn't made traditional. They made it with orange juice and some other stuff. And it was like the best whiskey sour I ever had in my life. But they said they, they switched it because it's not technically a whiskey sour. Who cares? It's better. Way better. You've had a pico sour. We put the, the, the white of an egg on there on top. On top? Like a foam, you mean? Yeah, it's amazing. I feel so like it's a, just- whiskey, a whiskey sour is supposed to have foam on top. Yeah. Like with, made with egg whites. Yeah, you don't put it on top. It just naturally forms from... And- yeah, on the top. So I think you just had a real whiskey sour, and they just called it something else. I bought it. <laughs> Were you <laughs> that? Cool. I, mean, I, I, would, I would hope so. I hope you didn't walk out on your tab. What I like about Stanford though is they're doing it right. You they get they take your card, swipe it, give it back, and then if you happen to leave, they'll close it out and automatically add twenty percent to it. I think that's smart. Because for a few reasons, you accidentally walk out, boom, they take care of it, no problem. But two, bar's too busy, leave, automatically 20%. That's what I was going to tip anyway, probably. Yeah, Mark, Mark, has a, Mark has a horror story about that. But Well, that's because he's going to the wrong bars. Yeah, you can't be careful. Sometimes I'm taxed up on, I feel like. Well, yeah, if you do that, then don't go to that bar. Yeah, I had one time I ordered a... Uh, I ordered a beer and I closed out right away. And then by close out, I ordered a beer through one bartender and I asked her to close out, but she didn't close out. So I closed it out through a different bartender. And then I, like, I just signed the paper. It's in front of me. And she, the other bartender comes up and she's like, you didn't pay for that. I was like, I definitely did just pay for this. Oh, yeah. She's like, no, you did. And I was like, yeah, I did. It's right here. She's like, that's not yours. <laughs> I was like, what's going I, on? I gotta agree. We, we've seen it happen to me where I, I told the individual three times, do not take my card. And then she still charged the wrong one. I have to drive all the way back Diff- in my Different car. story, but that, that's a completely different issue. But it's probably worse. Because he could have just left. What happened was Jared, who's very adamant about you not taking his card and holding it specifically, took the card and she gave it back. And when we leave, drive down the street, like five minutes or so, we get a call. Hey, uh... We gave you the wrong card. So sure enough, it was the wrong card. Was it the same same card but different yeah, name? Yeah, exact same. Yeah. So then she was like, I'm so sorry. And then Jared was like, yep, never doing this again. Yeah. I, w- I would ask my drinks for free. But like I had to drive back. Like I'm not, I'm not paying for these. Facts. I usually do that without any inconvenience happening to me. But yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, because listen, you should always ask for free stuff. Because the worst to say is no, but there might be a time where they say yes. But even if they never say yes, you're building confidence to ask for free things and put yourself in a weird situation, like an awkward situation. 
So it's character building. See, I don't, I don't think the worst they could say is no, because one time I asked for something for free and she just like put me on her like Facebook live and was like, this brokey can't pay his bill. <laughs> oh, like, would you guys like to donate? And then, you know, then I just left. I actually, almost- but you got a free drink. No, no, I left. I was just too embarrassed. I didn't even get a drink. I almost got in a fight with a bar manager one time downtown Orlando because uh, I ordered an old fashioned <clears throat> and they gave it to me like in like this glass. Uh, not old fashioned. I'm sorry. Uh, Long Island. <laughs> <laughs> that changes everything. And, you know, Long Island gets a big glass. So I looked at her and I was like, I was like, I just ordered one. I was like, it came in a different, bigger glass. She's like, oh, it's the same amount of stuff. <laughs> I was like, ain't no way in hell it's the same amount of stuff. So anyway, so the bar manager came up, like face tats, like crazy. Couldn't even see skin. <laughs> and we started, he started yelling at me. So I started yelling at him naturally. <laughs> so uh, finally he kicked me out of the bar and I ended up not paying for anything. So, so oh. it worked out. It worked out. Yeah. Always get kicked out of a bar for this very reason, because you won't have to pay for your tap. And all I was asking for was crazy. All I was asking for was just my drink remade in the right glass with the right amount of stuff. Yeah, and they could have easily <laughs> just taken that and poured it into the bigger glass and added more shit. Yeah, yeah, that's what you should have done. You'd be like, okay, can I get a bigger glass? So, and then poured it in there. So actually what happened was he, he was arguing me that was the same amount of glass. So I saw a dirty one on the table and I just grabbed it and I poured it in there. And it was like like that much of the, the cup. So I looked at him and I was like, is that the same amount of stuff to you? And he's like, so what do you want to drink it out of that dirty glass? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> huh. I yeah. want my drink. Have you uh, been back since? No, no. Well, downtown Orlando, are we going back ever? Where was it? Are they still open? Yeah, it was a uh, bullet bar. Oh, yeah, I, don't, I don't know where that is. Yeah. Don't go there. On the boulevard, probably. It's it's in the back. It's near uh, Shots, I think. Hmm, interesting. Can't say I've been. Anyways, back to our discussion. A, a next good pairing is um, dark chocolate. Hmm, not a liquid. Not a liquid. And actually, one time at Corona, they had a they had a pairing. It was a. Uh, I think it was rum. Macallan. It was a rum old fashioned, mm. and they gave you a dark chocolate. Oh, that with a wheel. You remember the wheel? Yeah. 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 They do that too with like a, I think it was a Macallan pairing where they or Macallan tasting, and then they give you like a chocolate too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Albanians have perfected this for years. You just sent me a TikTok on how an Albanian's breakfast versus an American's breakfast. An Albanian just smoking and then eating chocolate with a coffee. That's a perfect. It's a perfect pairing right there. That's, I think that's a solid breakfast. I think what Americans get confused about is they say balanced breakfast. But really, what they should be talking about is a balanced diet. Because realistically, you shouldn't be eating breakfast. You should just wait till, ideally, dinner. But wait till lunch, have dinner. So a balanced diet would include not breakfast. Except for you. I mean, yeah, you get cranky if you don't eat breakfast. Yeah, facts. But I work more efficiently. And that's all that matters. Just worry about all that. Worry about that cranky stuff right now. And then, then you can work efficient later. Yeah, if Alex picks me up in the morning, we don't really talk until he gets to Chick-fil-A. And it's always Chick Fil A, yeah, because that's like an early launch. So, you know, you get there right before ten thirty. Is that considered breakfast? Although I do miss their spicy chicken biscuit. I used to. They still have it. Oh, they brought it back. I just ordered it like last week. Oh. Remember they got rid of it for a while. I do. And are then, we going to argue about Chick Fil A again? And then they tried to say that they never had it. No, yeah. who, who said they never had it? Alex said they never had it. When they brought it back. Remember we had the whole Oh, argument? yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. You argued that they had it, like, years ago. Almost yeah. a decade at this point. They did. Yeah, they, they had it when we were in high school. They got rid of it towards the end of high school. As someone that went to Chick-fil-A every Friday, I disagree. As uh, someone that skipped <laughs> Spanish class and went there every morning. As someone that actively skipped all his classes to go, I disagree. I went every Friday, except during Lent. Because can't eat meat on Fridays during lunch. And I would always get a uh, spicy chicken biscuit, four count chicken minis meal, and then I would eat the biscuit for lunch. And a large soda. Which that's true. Which confirms the fact that we come from different timelines. 
I just think you don't think about remember. It. We weren't like tight in high school. We were cordial, but we were tight in high school. That's probably why. Then, you order the stop. spicy. Then the timelines emerged and we became friends. I just think maybe the spicy was a little too hot for you back then. I never had it, so it doesn't matter. But maybe you had it once and you were like, ooh, spicy. I think I think this all goes back to, you know, did you watch Spongebob as a kid or not? You know what I mean? Again, different timeline. Have you ever had, like, you know, sushi, sake, then pull out a cigar? Same time? No. No, but I, I will on uh, this cruise this weekend. They got sushi, and then they got a casino. Get, re- get ready for all the content that's about to be posted. <laughs> I'll wait till I see it. I'm going to record Zach, content. Zach's with a cigar in the mouth. I'm jumping off the boat! <laughs> <laughs> The cigar guy jumps off ship with a cigar in his hand. <laughs> Gets rescued. It's still smoking. <laughs> that's that's how they find me. It's the glow off of the cigar. There you go. I'm just like, I'm swimming, <laughs> holding the cigar up. <laughs> Take a flare. Yep. Last thing we got on the list is um, tea. Which, I mean, honestly, in the morning, a lot of times when I used to go... I would get, like, a unsweet tea and smoke Connecticut. I mean, tea is, like, a coffee replacement for people that live in the UK. Like, they don't drink coffee, they drink tea. Yeah. And milk. Yeah. So, it's, like, kind of the same thing, but not as good. Isn't unsweet tea, though, just black tea? Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. But it's iced. Yeah. Generally. Was- yeah, black tea is, like, hot, and then unsweet tea is just iced tea, iced black tea. But I don't know. I mean, we had unsweet tea at the restaurant, and um, we used to put sugar in it to make it better. Um, yeah, then it doesn't though. dissolve. Not a lot, just enough. Yeah, tea's brewed hot. Oh, so you okay? I, I, th- I thought you were saying like you have the iced tea and then you put sugar in it. No, nah, man, we brewed our tea every morning. Okay, good. Yeah. But you got to put sugar in it to make it taste good. So our sweet tea had sugar, like a lot, like a pitcher full of sugar, as it should. Then our unsweet tea had like half a pitcher and you know they're like man this is the best sunsweet tea i've ever had uh-huh. i'm like yeah it is it's a half and half that, we, that, we, that's we a used joke to sell, we do that we still snapple too and when they changed the bottling of it i stopped ordering it it's not a little boycott yeah because it used March to be glass bottles boycott stuff yeah but that's a good reason to boycott no i i, I mean maybe it's just our whole family because i boycotted stuff for for less you know i guess probably the same mm. over a bottle I, I, I wouldn't say less. I definitely boycott stuff, though, but for like actual reasons. That, however, I do agree with the glass thing. I, I boycott any business that doesn't accept cash, as you should. There, they should be shut down. I boycott it's illegal. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Yeah, Mark single handedly eliminated Black Rifle Coffee from the market. I can't find it anymore. You see it less in the gas stations. It's still at Ace Hardware, though. <laughs> what, did, what did they do? I forgot. They, they donated to like um, anti gun laws and stuff. And they didn't spot, They didn't support Kyle Rittenhouse during his trial. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, you know, because they, they're against guns, which is ironic. Weird. Yeah. They're for what the Im- they're for the they like guns for the image. That's it. That's it. Yeah. 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 Do you think I, that all their commercials had like BB guns in it instead of real guns? No, I think they were real guns because uh, I bet you everyone who started working there was like, oh, this is a badass company. And they just used uh, the employees' guns until all that came out and then they left. So now I bet you they use BB guns. Yeah, which sucks too because I really like their coffee. Well, too, we went to the one and they have an actual place in Savannah. Yeah, and it was really good. It was really good. And they had a no concealed carry sign on there. They did. That's gay. I'm pretty sure it, it also doesn't mean anything, but <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> still gay. It's like a uh, Buffalo Wild Wings has that too. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's yeah, it's so dumb. But how are you gonna know if you're the CEO yeah. of Buffalo Wild Wings and you're watching this? I've carried a gun into your establishment every single time. Yeah. I th- uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Allegedly. No. Allegedly. I did. It's <laughs> factual information. I'm not alleging anything. It's factual information. 
that Snapple thing though, it's like it was so iconic, you know, like the bottles, yeah, the glass bottle. Yeah, that was and like the whole thing. For a while, they changed it to plastic, but it still looked like the glass bottles, which is all right, I guess. I yeah, still, I everything still, tastes better in glass. Yeah, but when they did that, I was just kind of iffy about it, and then they just completely changed the bottle in general, and I was like, all right, I'm done. And then I had a customer come in one time and asked me where it went, and I told him <laughs> like exactly why I stopped carrying it. He's like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I was like, all right, cool. Well, imagine like if they changed the bottles of like Mexican Cokes to it, plastic bottles. Dude, I got I got into an argument at work because it's called a Mexican Coke, and I ordered one at Dos Bros, which is like a Mexican place, and uh, it's like a Chipotle style, you know, whatever. And uh, I'm like, can I get Mexican Coke? He's like, that's just a Coke. I'm like, no, it's Mexican Coke. It's from Mexico. And then he's like. He's like, no, that's just a Coke. That's how you order it. Dude, we got this huge argument. They're made in Mexico. That's why they're called Mexican Cokes. I know. Yeah, And, and, sugar, I, and sugar cane, too. If you order a Coke, you're getting a cup with fountain Coke. That's what I said. Chipotle has Mexican Cokes. And if you, yeah, if you order a Coke, you're going to get a, they're going to give you a drink, a fountain cup, whatever. I'm like, no, that's not, that's not what I ordered. And then even, I, I even showed them the website and the website's like Mexican Coke. I'm like... Hmm. Yeah, so you're forced to drink the Coke, though. Which honestly, I'm another pairing good. not on here um, is soda. You got your Dr. Peppers, you got your Mexican Cokes, you got your regular Cokes. I do think I, I don't pair cigars with soda except for like a Mexican Coke. I think you know, I mean, it's I guess the real cane sugar in it, but like I think that pairs beautifully with it, especially after like a long day. You know, you need something to refresh you. You drink Coke, and then you get get like a nice, not heavy cigar, just medium bodied. I think that works well with it. You, you got to try Dr Pepper. Dr Pepper with a cigar, all twenty three of them flavors. That yeah, changed your life. Twenty three and me, Dr Pepper. Yeah, typically you want the like the, the darker sodas. Sprite, it's a little weird. No, like a Mister Pib, maybe. Yeah. Root beer. Root beer. Dr. Thunder. Or squirt. <laughs> Starry. I was all tired I, once. I, I, I would not agree with a squirt. <laughs> Wait, did you guys know uh, Mountain Dew was made to be mixed with whiskey? Yeah, like Jim Bean. Does anyone ever, have you guys ever tried that? I've never tried that. I think I have. I have not. I'll try it tonight, though. I'm going out tonight, so. Can I get a uh, Blanton's mixed with Mountain Dew? <laughs> Can I get a... Uh, you know what's a pretty, invite- good, you know what's pretty good drink is um, Southern Comfort with um, sweet tea. That sounds right. You got you got two of the most Southern things right there. And you have Southern Comfort. What does that do? It's comforting your Southernness with sweet tea. What does that do? Also comforts hey, your Southernness. It comforts your Southernness. You know, hey... I go to New York, for example, walk into a shop. Hey, let me get, you know, whatever to eat, biscuits and gravy. Uh, we don't got that. All right, fine. Let me at least get a sweet tea. I don't know what that is. You want tea with sugar? Th- th- a sweet tea. It's not going to happen. You know, so then you go to a southern place, get a sweet tea. And you're like, I'm pissed at these New Yorkers for not having it. Add some southern comfort in it. I think it really brings you home. There you go. Was it on me the whole time? No, it was on me. Oh, okay. It, it, I mean, it's a good mix, though. I don't, I, you guys haven't tried it. You should try it. I just said it was. Point proven. I'll yeah, just I, give you an example. I don't think you've had it, though. I have not had it. And they call it... <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean I can't experience it. Exactly. Like, I haven't had it, but we've had it. <laughs> we the cigar the guys have had it, all right? We've been to the border. <laughs> we call it... Southern hospitality. I haven't been to the border specifically, but we've been <laughs> to the border. I haven't been to Paris either. It's a group effort. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I just feel like like I went to Jersey. I tried all these Italian restaurants. I rated on myself because Alex was texting us every day about these places. Exactly. I wanted you to feel like you were there. Like, I was pissed. You remember? You were pissed I, too. I felt left out. I was, I was there. No, nah, I felt like I was like sitting next to him. I was pissed when we didn't get dessert. 
uh, on the last. The I was last upset day, too because we were too full. Just because you were too full doesn't mean I was too full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should have had it for him. Oh, so when it's inconvenient for you, it's not the same. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, because we share hunger. So I'm hungry it, right now. It averages out, and I'm not hungry, but I'll eat. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I'll eat too. Yeah, Jerry, did you know that their periods are actually linked? <laughs> They're synchronized. <laughs> That's what happens. I didn't want to ask, but now I want to know. Uh, well, now you know. When you hang out, your period cycle lines up. That's factual. That's why, at the same time, like our, our girlfriends hang out, it's always the same time during the month where we're not doing anything. Yeah, that's when me and Alex are stressed out the most. <laughs> it's factual information. Not me. I just leave my home. I leave. <laughs> True. I think that's all we got, though. What do you like to pair with your cigars? Usually whiskey. Is it coffee? Is it whiskey? It's been coffee for me lately. Is it scotch? I like a good book and hot milk. <laughs> like <laughs> some crackers. Milk. Oh, some crackers. Milk. That's another thing, right? What? You wanted to talk about that. Pairing milk. Personally, Personally I, I oh. prefer breast milk <laughs> with like a good... Light Ashton cigar. Mm. He's wearing Homelander <laughs> blue right now too. Shout out to the boys, like like us the boys or like the show, the nah. show, the show. You have one of those uh, refrigerated drawers oh. at your house too. <laughs> yeah, oh, of course. Ewe, <laughs> oh man, they done kill me wife and took me bloody son. Womp womp. Oi oi oi. <laughs> 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 We gotta start over. I, I didn't click record. You're lying. All right, we're good now. <laughs> All right, is that it? All right, you see you on the next one. Roll the outro. That's it. Roll the outro. It, it wasn't on you, loser. Roll the up. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short-form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below.